communicating to somebody here. The Bible declares that as she was bleeding for 12 years, according to the Jewish custom, when you begin to bleed, you are to be removed out from other people because you are considered to be an outcast. So she was removed from her family. She was removed from her business. She was removed from everything that she knows. And now she is in a place where she's in an environment where she has to feel the pain and everybody else who is to encourage her, nobody is there. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? People that have to encourage her, nobody else is encouraging her. People that have to come to a place where they where they celebrate her, people that have to come to a place where they console her, nobody is consoling her. These are certain kind of situations that people go through when it comes to life. These are certain kind of situations that people go through when it comes to the journey of life. The journey of life is not an easy journey. Are you, am I communicating to somebody? I said, am I communicating to somebody? And the Bible declares that before this woman was introduced into this story, the Bible began to speak about a certain man who was called Jairus, who was a man, who was a mighty man. He was also a great man whereby he was a chief priest and this man being a chief priest, the Bible declares that her daughter became sick and she was about to die and this daughter also was 12 years and you understand that 12 is the number of governance. Now what you begin to understand on this story what pains me the most is the Bible says that he was a leader in the synagogue despite her being a leader in church despite her being a leader in the synagogue her daughter was sick with a disease that was uncurable am i communicating to somebody here when troubles and battles come sometimes they do not care about what position you carry when troubles and battles come sometimes they do not look at how much you have when troubles and battles come sometimes they do not look at how what you possess. The Bible tells me about a man in the book of Kings. The Bible tells me about a man called Naaman. Naaman was a commander in the army. He was a man who was commanding thousands and thousands. But the Bible says that Naaman had leprosy. Imagine being at a place where he's a mighty man. A man celebrated by thousands. A man feared by thousands. But he was a man who had leprosy. Uh, he, 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 he was celebrated publicly, but privately, he had a pain he could not explain. He was celebrated publicly, but privately, something was eating him up. When he goes back home, after winning battles, he would sleep in agony. Naaman, when he would go back home, after removing the uniform, after removing all the regalia, after after removing all the positions, after removing all the army ranks in which he was a commander, he would sleep in agony. There are people you look in life, they might be driving big cars, but while they are driving, you might be standing outside saying, God, I wish if only I can be in such a position. But somebody, while least they are going there, they are crying and what they are crying is, God, if only you can heal me because doctors would have told them despite all you have we have reached to a place that what you are having, that disease you have, we can't cure it anymore. They call it an incurable disease. Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Jairus looks at himself. He is an army commander. Jairus looks at himself. He is a man of influence. Jairus looks at himself. He is a man of great caliber, respected. A man saluted. A man respected by all. But there is something eating him up from inside. His daughter is about to die. And it was his only daughter. It was his only hope. 
hope. Every parent, when they give birth to a child, the reason why they cherish the child is not only that the child is their seed, it is because also the child becomes the representation of their future. The child also becomes the representation of their continuity of whatever dream they have. But coming to a place where it seems like the dream is about to die, Jairus calls on the master and the master says, I'm going to your house because he was well respected. Am I communicating to somebody here? Oh God, am I communicating to somebody here? But along the way, as they began to go to Jairus' house, the Bible declares that they reached to a place where people started to come and there was a stampede. Jesus knows where he's going, but because people were expecting, they are pressing on him to say, we want, to, we want you to heal others also. We want you to heal our family members. We want to heal our brothers and our mothers. Jesus was on demand and Jairus is desperate. And it comes to a place that there was a woman who also had an issue of blood for 12 years. 12 years she was hemorrhaging. It was now an abnormal, normal situation to her. 12 years. Mm. There are situations you can't go through for two months, three months, four months. But for this woman, it was 12 years. She's in pain for 12 years. You look at her, you will not understand how she speaks and why she does what she does. She's a woman who is going through so much you may not understand because you are not the one in the situation. Uh, she's going through so much you may not understand because you are not in her shoes. She's thinking of her family, but she's an outcast according to the law. She's not allowed to speak to her family because everybody who gets to be in contact with her is also termed an outcast. So even her children are afraid to come close to her. Her husband is afraid to come close to her. Even the people that are her relatives, they are afraid to come close to her. And in her mind, the only thing that she has is God, I am alone. And if it's not you, then who? Because everybody else has left her. If you don't do this, then who? Because everybody else is silent. Nobody's coming to check her anymore. It's now 12 years. It's like a prison. You know, when you get to be in a prison, and you are sentenced for 12 years. The first six months, people can come. The first one year, people can come. The first one year, two years, three years, people can come. But there is a point where everybody will say, I think I have to move on with my life because life is still moving. So she's at a place where she's desperate, more than even Jairus, because her life depends on her healing. Her restoration depends on her healing. And she began to speak to herself. Have you ever been to a position and to a time where you have conversations with yourself and people think you are insane, where you are talking to yourself, you are like imagining things, you are at a place where you are speaking to yourself, people think you are delusional. She's saying to herself, mm -hmm. Oh God, thank you. She began to speak to herself. She said, Lord, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. Who told you that at the garment there is a miracle? Sometimes when you are desperate, there are conversations you have within yourself. There is a way you start convincing yourself. There are things you begin to create in, in your mind. Some of the things can be good. Some of the things may not be good. But I want you to understand there are conversations. Everybody who gets to be in a place where they are in a situation that is unbearable. There is a time you need to sit alone and speak to your mind and speak to God. There is a woman called Rebecca. The Bible says she was pregnant. And in the time when she was pregnant, there are children that began to fight in the womb of Rachel. In the 
the children that began to fight in the home of Rebecca. And Rebecca said, if everything is well with me, why am I like this? She was not talking to God. She was talking to herself, asking herself, why am I going through what I'm going through? Am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? Have you ever realized that when you get to be in a place where you are traumatized, it is like you begin to become more talkative. Why? Because sometimes you can't express the pain. Sometimes you can't hide the pain. It just wants to come out and gush out. Or am I communicating to somebody here? I said, am I communicating to somebody here? The whole man was in pain. And she said, I want to touch the hem of his garment. I hope he made her. I'm going to try my try. And at least that try has got to be the best try. There are people in life, they are not looking for millions. There are people in life, they are not looking to be among billionaires. The only thing they are crying about is, Lord, I'm coming from a family where the divine hand is needed. I only need one chance in life to show and prove myself. There are people in life, like the woman, the age of blood, who has been there for 12 years, and the only thing they are looking for is I only need one chance and one opportunity to grab that him. In as much as people are pressing, I need one opportunity to grab that him. Am I talking to somebody here who's coming from a place or a position where you feel in yourself the only thing you are looking for right now is one opportunity and your life can be better. You are saying I only need one shot like David and that shot will kill a Goliath. I only need one opportunity to face a Goliath and there is a reward and I'm going to bring out my family out of the muddy clay and my family is going to sit on the table. Am I communicating to somebody here? And sometimes you have to earn your place at the table. You, you have to earn your place at the table. Everybody wants to be on the table. Everybody wants to sit on the table of greatness. Uh, but, but there is a problem about the table uh, that the Lord was speaking to me today in the morning. Uh, there are three ways you can be on the table. You can be on the table because you've been invited on the table. You can be on the table because you are serving on the table. Or you can be on the table because you are the food being ate on the table. And most of the times, because of desperation of being on the table, many have ate their destiny and many have saved their destiny to be devolved. So the devil tries by all means to bring people to a place where you become desperate. Because in desperation you can't think straight. That's why it's desperate. You are not well. You are desperate. You are separated mentally. You are in a place where you are dysfunctional. The only thing you are looking for is a relief. But sometimes the relief is not a relief. Sometimes the relief is killing you more. Um, am I communicating to somebody? If somebody is involved in an accident or an accident, if somebody is involved in a tragic accident, you can't give them panadols. You can't give them painkillers because sometimes you might give them painkillers and they think they are well, yet their back is broken and the more they walk, the more it will get worse. Sometimes all I need is to be whole and all I need is to make sure that I'm insane so 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 the woman, the woman began to drag herself uh, and we all understand with the little signs that you might have learned that uh, the more blood comes out the more strength goes and this was not for months, this was not for days, this was not for weeks, but this was for years. So I believe for 12 years now, she's at a place where she no longer has strength. And one of the problems that Leviticus says, the life of a thing is in its blood. So the more blood is coming out, the more life is coming out. I don't know, is it your finances that are hemorrhaging? Is it your spiritual life that is hemorrhaging? And for how long? 
Is it your emotions that are hemorrhaging and for how long? Is it your business hemorrhaging for how long? There are people, your strength is being drained and bit by bit, men are seeing you walking, but you are a dead man walking. Why? Because life is going. The more you are walking, just like Naaman, they look at you, they celebrate you. Yes, you are a commander, but when you are alone, you are crying and saying, God, when will this end? And the more, the more, the more, the more they are clapping hands, the more it begins to pain you, the more, because they feel and think you are no man. But inside you, you know something is not right. Inside you, you know something is not normal. I believe the first years before it was recognized, the woman was trying to cover the blood all she can put everything she can cover until it was unstoppable now she can't do anything her eyes are becoming dim her skin is becoming pale people are surprised what did you do and I believe to become an outcast people began to blame her for a situation Oh, maybe, maybe you touched something you are not supposed to touch. Maybe you spoke and cursed somebody you are not supposed to curse. Maybe you angered God, just like Job. When the friends of Job came, they say to Job, you have angered God. Job, whatever that is happening in your life, you have done something that is wrong. Job looks at himself and says, I have served God well. And that, that is the pain of life sometimes, where you reach a place where people love you because of your situation. Some battles we did not choose. Some battles chose us. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, some battles I did not choose. Some battles chose me. Uh, look at Job. At the point where she's lost everything. Job has lost everything and he's at a place where he's losing his wife that the wife is saying kiss God and die maybe if you die the little that is left can be preserved and the friends are coming all of them they're saying you are the one who's wrong and Job is still standing and saying God what did I do have you ever been in a position like Jesus the Bible declares that Jesus gets to be in a place Jesus gets to be in a place where he is standing at the place of Golgotha. He's being crucified. And the Bible declares that he lifted up his voice and said, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakatan. He was saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me. He knows that he's faithful before God. He knows that he's a son of God. But there is a point where pain is too much and he's crying to God to say, God, why are you now quiet? Being in a position where you are praying but it seems as if God is quiet. Being in a position where you are crying and it seems as if God is quiet. This is one of the position situations that many people go through that the more seems like things are getting tougher the more you are praying and seems like there is no answer but I want to tell you just like a tutor or just like a sports trainer they, will not, they may not run with you in the tracks, but one thing that I know, they are standing at the end of the track waiting for you at the finishing line. I want to tell you somebody, you did not start this life alone. You did not start this journey alone. You did not start this alone. The Bible declares that he who has begun a good thing in us is faithful and just to accomplish it. One thing that I know is that there is a God. I don't care what you're going through. I don't mind what's happening now. But there is something that I know as long as God is on the throne, something will happen in your life. Am I communicating to somebody? Somebody might be asking, yes, I hear what you're talking about, but you don't understand the pain that I'm going through. I have come to a place where I've become numb. Hear me, child of God. The Bible declares that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God shall deliver them out of them all. I know you are going through pain. I know you are going through situations where you are asking yourself a lot of questions. 
that but as long as God is God there is a way he will turn around that situation I love it in Psalms 126 the Bible says when the Lord turns the captivity of Zion we were like them that dream then our mouth is filled with laughter oh, am I communicating to somebody they began to say among the heathens see what the Lord has done for them hear me there are people that are watching your life there are people that are watching what you are doing and they are ready to give an opinion if you are in pain they will say yes she deserves it if a miracle happens they will say we knew God will do something they are always ready to speak your focus must not be on what they say your focus must be on what is God saying but it becomes a problem when you are not even in a place where you are hearing what God is saying it becomes traumatic when you are at a place where it seems as if his voice is silent. Yeah. Oh, Kabbalata. And this does not just happen to people that are not, that are, that are not prayerful. The Bible tells us about a man called Zachariah, who was a priest of the Most High, married to a woman called Elizabeth who was a daughter of a priest. The Bible says they were blameless before God. They were righteous before God but they were barren. That by the time when God came and told Elizabeth, by the time when God came and told and told and told Zachariah that you are going to have a child, Zachariah said how shall it be? When a person who serves God and is a priest begins to ask questions as if they doubt God, it becomes a problem. How shall it be? How shall it be? How shall it be? How shall it be? So the woman speaks to herself and she says, if I only touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. Who told you? Do you know that sometimes when you are in the lowest of your life, when you are in the most position where life is pressuring you, there are certain things you say to yourself that if people hear you, they think you are insane. <laughs> there are times when, when you say that God is going to make a way, people will look at you and say, how? They know you pray. They know your life. And they're asking how. You're saying God will make a way. How? We have known you all along. How? The Bible says she went and she touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible says she was made whole. The Bible says, and Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? For virtue has gone out of me. Who touched me? Kabolata Kapanda. Who touched me? For virtue has gone out of me. The Bible begins to declare that everybody began to deny. How can you say that somebody touched you? There are thousands of people that are here. How can you say that somebody touched you? It was not a common touch. It was a touch of somebody who knew what they wanted. Certain people, the only thing they are looking for is one opportunity in the presence of God. Certain people, what they are looking for is only one word from God. They are not looking for a lot of things because they understand if I can only have an encounter with that one word, my life will change. If I can only have that one encounter with God, my situation will change. Child of God, I know you have heard a lot of messages, but there is a point where you will be like David. The Bible says David, after coming from Ziklag in 1 Samuel chapter number 3, he arrives after a victory and he sees his home is in shambles. One of the biggest points of pain is public success but private failure. 
Where people are seeing you as if things are fine, they look at your smile, they think things are well. But inside you, there is a leprosy eating you. And you can't confess it to people because they will start undermining you. You can't speak it to people because the moment you confess it, people will see the other side you never, you never wanted them to see. So you keep on covering yourself with smiles. You keep on covering yourself with dressing modest and fine. But you understand and you know that something in you is not right. I believe beyond any doubt that somebody under the sound of my voice tonight, the Lord God of heaven is about to do a miracle that will change and transform your life in the name of Jesus. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, whatever battle the enemy was bringing and raising over your life and destiny, the Lord is about to fight for you. Amen. So, this woman, Jesus, is not coming to her, but she puts herself in Jesus' calendar. And the Bible begins to decree that the moment after she was healed, somebody from the synagogue came to Jesus and said to Jairus, do not bother the master anymore because the daughter you want him to heal is already dead. is already dead. The greatest pain of a person who's believing that God is going to do a miracle, a breakthrough is going to happen, but they, 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 they you know, he reaches to a place where he is, he, he believes that I'm not closer to my miracle and somebody comes with news and say, your daughter is dead. And this is not somebody from outside. It's somebody from the synagogue. One of your own. Comes with good news. And say, don't bother the master. <clears throat> when the devil wants to fight you. When the devil wants to discourage you. When the devil wants to destroy you. He will fight you the same way he did to David. David won all the battles from outside, but inside his house, he could not win the battles. Do you understand that when the devil wants to fight you, he will bring people around you that will tell you how things will not work out for you? Your daughter is dead. And Jesus looks at Jairus. And says, do not listen to them, but believe in my ability. Do not listen to what they are saying, but believe in what I can do. Do not listen to what they are trying to bring, the news they are trying to bring. Isaiah says, whose report shall you believe? Amen. Whose report shall you believe? Being at a position where you are looking for comfort, but there's no comfort anywhere. And you are at a place where you kneel down to pray, but there are no words to pray. Because if you are going to say, God, you are faithful, what you are going through is not reflecting his faithfulness. And you are at a place where if you are going to say, God, I thank you. You can't thank him of what you are going through because that's the worst situation of your life. So are you going to thank God for the pain? Uh, are you going to thank God for the betrayal? Being at a place where you, you are kneeling down and you don't have any words to say. So Jesus lifts up his eyes and he did not say, thank you, Father. He says, my Father, why have you forsaken me? Imagine if the Son of God comes to a place where he reaches a point where he says, God, why have you forsaken me? What about you? 
If the Son of God gets to a place where he feels so much pain that with what is going through in his body, he says, God, why have you forsaken me? I believe sometimes when God looks at you in those moments where sometimes you doubt God, in those moments where sometimes you feel like God is not even close. Oh, do you know there are points where everybody reaches a point in life where you ask yourself, is God really alive? Yes, and does he exist? Not because you are an unbeliever, but because the pain has gotten to a point where it is, the, 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 it is now the medium that is speaking. There is a point where your situation will speak. There is a point where what you are going through will speak. You may cover it up for long, but there is a point where it will speak out. Amen. Oh... You may try by all means to cover that, that, that situation that's eating you inside, but there is a point where the vessel in you will fill up and you can't cover it up. You can't close it up. It wants to come out. When you read your Bible, in the book of Proverbs 13 verse 12, the Bible says, hope deferred maketh the heart sick. There is a point and there is a time where you are believing. Where even when you are put to be in prayer, your prayer is different from everybody else. I know God will open doors. I know that I'm going nations. I know that things will change. You go one year, two years, and this is 12 years. She is waiting for a situation to change. I believe she reaches at a point where she's at six years and she folds her hands. So what should I pray for anymore? I have been praying for the last six years but this thing has not been changed ah! she reaches eight years she's saying what's happening and there is no hope Jesus has not even been called to say that is coming and by that time when you are an outcast they will just wait for you to be well by yourself there if a miracle will happen no certainty that she would be healed for 12 years she was not certain <laughs> She had no certainty that a situation would change. Amen. All she had was that she was tying on a twine to say maybe, but maybe something will happen. You go to such a person, you ask them to pray. If you hear them pray, sometimes you wonder, what kind of a prayer is this? When you go through situations, there's a point where you cannot pray, but all you can do are conversations. Amen. And most of these conversations, because you are not certain where they are going, they are conversations you are speaking to yourself. There are dreams you are trying to build within yourself in order to encourage yourself. Ah, you didn't hear me. There are dreams when you are in the place of a pit like Joseph, where you begin to have those dreams are to encourage yourself. So David arrives at Ziklag after a mighty victory in battle. People are celebrating him publicly. He arrives and he sees that the family has been taken. Everything is gone. All that he worked for for years is gone. And the Bible declares that people were angry and they wanted to stone him. People wanted to make sure that he's gone. And the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. It is not an easy position for you to get to a place where you have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Not at the Lord, in the Lord. Uh, he is the one who is motivating himself. Let me try to explain what's happening there. If you read on the previous scriptures, the Bible says they cried until they could not cry anymore. They cried until they could not cry anymore. They cried until there was no more tears to cry. They cried 
cried until there was no more hope of what they were going through. They cried until the hope of any kind of relief was seen. And the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. And the Bible did not say encourage himself with scriptures. It's a conversation he's having within himself. It's a conversation he's speaking to himself. You see those conversations like you were having when you were growing up, where you were telling yourself, I'm going to become a millionaire. Who you're telling yourself, I'm going to become somebody great. Those are the conversations that when you are in this position, they start coming back again. You begin to build your most holy faith. I came to speak to somebody tonight. Somebody who is crying and they're saying, God, I want to see your hand in my life. Somebody who's crying and they're saying, God, I want to see you touch my life. I want you to know that despite what you are going through, that situation that seems as if you are pinned on a cross or pinned on the wall, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way where it seems as if everything is closed everything is easy everything there is a wall there is a steel door that has been put in front god will make a way Amen. where there seems no way we are gonna get to a moment where we are gonna pray i want you to look at your neighbor and say god is gonna make a way god is going to make a way I want to pray with you wherever you are. I believe that God is going to make a way. I want you to lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name in the name of Jesus. David declares and says, since I was born until now, I've never seen the righteous being forsaken, nor that children of the righteous lacking bread. Lord, in the name and the blood of Jesus, we know, mighty God, that despite situations, circumstances, we know, mighty God, that you are going to make a way. Lord, we know that your mighty hand shall be revealed in our lives and our destinies. Father, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Keronde katoma na jai perede katula pa arode kenosai. Beranonde kataya. That sickness, that disease you have been having for years, for months. That sickness, that disease that the doctors have diagnosed you with. In Jesus' mighty name, I decree the healing of the living God. I decree it to disappear and be gone. In the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. As I pray with you, I pray in Jesus' name. That situation that is making you to have sleepless nights, I decree divine intervention in the name of Jesus. I speak divine intervention by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the resurrected Christ, that spirit that has been crushed. You are at a place where you feel you are crushed. You are at a place where you feel that life has brought you down. I decree and I pray for you in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bring you to a place where your destiny, your life, your spirit, your, your heart is revived again in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. I pray in Jesus mighty name that whatever the enemy had done to destroy your confidence, to destroy who you are, that you are now inferior, you no longer believe in yourself. I speak that the spirit of the Lord come upon you again. The Bible says in the spirit of him that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. He shall revitalize your mortal bodies. I decree and I declare in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus your mortal body to be revitalized. The dreams you had. 
attack that the enemy, that situations had come and all the dreams you had had been watered down, toned down. May the Lord begin to resurrect those dreams. I pray in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, may doors be opened for you from the north, from the east, from the south and from the west. May the Lord begin to open doors for you. There are people that God has assigned to be your destiny helpers. I pray that may the Lord send you help in Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord God send you help by the power of the resurrected Christ. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, your health is coming back again. Your joy is coming back again. Your happiness is coming back again. Somebody might be asking, how shall it be? The Holy Ghost is coming upon you. I pray the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. Everybody standing up as a principality. Everybody responsible for the taking away of your joy. Everybody responsible for the crushing of your spiritual heart, your destiny. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I speak the vengeance of the Lord. I speak the vengeance of the Lord. I speak the vengeance of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, may the wealth of the secret places be brought into your hands by the power of the Holy Ghost. I decree and I declare, may your ears open to the voice of God and may the Lord begin to speak for you. I decree and I declare, by the power of the Holy Ghost, destiny altering altars are being broken in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, by the power of the Holy Ghost, cycles and patterns that is limiting people from your father's side from your mother's side are being broken in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, doors are opening in the economic arena, in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus, angels are being released to assist you and lift you up and to minister to your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and I declare, the Bible declares that my word shall not return to me void, but it shall fulfill what I send it to do. Every word spoken over your life and spoken over your destiny every declaration every decree every prophecy every dream I pray may it manifest may it manifest may it manifest may it manifest Oh Lord, we decree uh, there is a paradigm shift in the spirit. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, there is a paradigm shift in the spirit. Uh, the Lord is shifting up things. Uh, the Lord is changing up things. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, a way is being made uh, where there seems to be no way. Uh, I decree and I declare your life shall not be the same. Uh, I decree a turn around. 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 I decree a turn around. I decree a turn around. Families are being changed. Careers are being changed. Destinies are being changed. Ayeka balatakua irande katamanaka oreto la kataya you are not a man that you should lie no are you the son of a man that you should repent will you say it and not fulfill it yaka baradakaya lande katoya the bible says time to favor Zion is now time to favor Jerusalem is now in the name of Jesus when the Lord turns the captivity of Zion, we will again the dreamer, turn again the captivity of God in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Your Bible declares affliction shall not rise the second time. I decree and I declare every affliction, every infliction you have been going through, it has been crumbled now. It has been crumbled now by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray for you in the name and the blood of Jesus. 
or receive restoration. The Bible declares, I will restore the years that the canker will miss eaten. I will restore the years that the palm will miss eaten. I pray for you and I decree and I declare in the realm of the spirit, we are changing things. In the realm of the spirit, we are changing the magnetic field. We decree and declare, tables are turning. The first shall be the last. Tables are turning. The Bible says, you prepare a table before me and my enemies. Lord, prepare a table, a table of greatness. In the name of Jesus, somebody decree, it shall be my time, and it is my time. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare. Carlotta, every principality that has been standing in your life, standing in your destiny to make sure hindrances and embargoes are established, they are being broken now. 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 We break barriers. We break barriers. We break barriers. We break barriers. In the name of Jesus, barriers are being broken. Barriers are being broken in the name of Jesus. Kebuda bashande kapreta liza ziume neko sabre hevini kapule harusa kai miando kasambre hatoi mansekula rakwe banto usmalati anko paritia lia kwebe do katoma na katebelia ako bires atom maritle akni atoa ila preka dayton kema natoa ya kopa la katela maratala your captivity is turning again it is turning again it is turning again it is turning again it is turning again Oh God, you are God. Miledo bo sharatalira, riki diviri bo shalamando kapere didi asa, ebre didi didi atole bibi bibi otora didi ota, abiri didi antoni bibi bibi roska lidi atoni kandu badi askata, ibre didi o shalamando katai bentoa, zoponde katai ralira karura mande katare dia, ratoli maru katona mande katiwi bo shkala pa, ipadi kwe tala baruti anso tai beta. In the name of Jesus, Ilande Karoshka to Ataya, Akopa Latu Akaponakai, Raso Taido Basha, Ilande Katoma Nata, Yakola Barata, you can never leave me nor forsake me, O Shaloto Watai, Ishalete Laroa, Riado Ria Sola Madai Tontawa Vereatoa. Oh, Shalamando Kataya, Zekona Mande Kataya Kapalatai, Zando Katamana Katai. Ah, we thank you for your love, oh God. We send words in the spirit. Ships are happening now. Names are being mentioned in places. Names are being mentioned in places. Your name is being mentioned in places of decision makers. Your name is being mentioned in the places of decision makers. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, me take a power to a paskete barota, yendo katoma na kate barita kai, yareto ne marade katoma na na nuatelos katea, repili katoma na da 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 diatelosa, rata la da katala ba. That situation is changing. In the name of Jesus, ibala to ko aporadia, rata la ba da katala. There is a shift in the spirit. There is a shift in the spirit. There is a shift in the spirit. Situations are changing. Situations are changing. There is a shift in the spirit. There is a ship, there is a ship, there is a ship. Burdens are being lifted. Burdens are being lifted. Burdens are being lifted. In the name of Jesus, Yarotosa Tai, Retomosa Tea, Lala Yoro Rebosha Lala Lama, Mende Capara de Calamande, Lando Catamana Catiwaba, Yadereba Sande Kai, Oya Barasketaya. 
Faradi katala bana kata. O ya talaba, zaro talaba da. Jala tala marande kataya, rande katola marande kataya. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, kile barada katala badas katua pa. Kina mande katola barada katoma na katua ba. Baros katoma na katebala katebala. Zakaboras katoma na katebalita. Oh God, zamando kapala. Kebre de katoma na dakilata ma apala da 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 kayata zando kala para de katua palata zakalo boskata. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We bless and exalt your name, O oh God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Yala boskai kabos katalaba. You, you are the Lord. Kabolas katalaba, kapala katuma nakata, zokuma la doko palata, kirande de didi asola mama ba didi onsa raba ba didi askara didi onsa, breleke didi asole ma didi onsa bre didi didi anselata, kibrunde karidi bo usala mandri didi oska da ba didi didi askado didi asle didi a. Bres konta no pando kantendo uska la pando katona mandendo uska type ki mandendo uska pala katumba rada katima na katemba dai ki brande katama na konra katuma na didi di asa karota na manda kutai ziprando konda donde ndangam bamben donge mbambenga ki brande donde ndangam bambenga donde nga ki banto uska ponde didi katuma na dakai. Italota, menton kapala te komara de kotam, isandon den kaprakas kotan ne ma, into la 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 rura katum manata, katua to pam mara de katona mana katua, iato to yata, iato to yata, iato yata ne kotona mane kata. Oh Jesus, misonde katum mana katai, brale kota mana kate mana katiwa pa. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your name in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kileto skore bonta no maskata ba. Uye kona masome na katema na. Oh Lord, you are worthy to be glorified. Baso tola katuma naske paya. Kano moska palata kula palakata. Ikando katala palikata. Maskatalaba. Zanto Kalabal. Jehovah. Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. You are the mighty warrior, great and old. Jehovah. You are 
as a mighty warrior, great in Beiro, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. You are the mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. You are the mighty warrior, great in battle, Jehovah is your name. Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you are God. Thank you for gracing us with your spirit. Thank you, Mary God, for your presence. Thank you, Mary God, for the hearts, destinies, families, careers you have touched. In the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are God. The God of a thousand times more may increase them a thousand times more. In the name of Jesus, I believe that it's their time and it's my time to testify. In the name of Jesus. We thank you because you are God. David said, since I was born until now, I've never seen the righteous being forsaken, nor their children lacking bread. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are God. We will never lack. We thank you for provision. Thank you for opening doors. Thank you, mighty God for making our candles, the candles of our spirit to shine brighter and make kings come to the shining of our lights. In Jesus' name. May God bless you. May God be with you. And may God touch and transform your life. Tell us what God is doing in your life. And uh, if it is your first time, if it is your first time, I want you to pray this prayer. You have not received Jesus. I want you to say, Dear Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Wash me with your precious blood. I believe you are the son of God. And you died and you resurrected. And you are alive forevermore. Erase my name from the book of death. And write my name in the book of life. Father, in the name of Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Your Bible says, though your, your, your sins are red as, as, as scarlet, I wash them to be white as snow. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer, welcome to be a child of God. And I believe wherever you are, Details will be put on the screen. You would want to attend uh, the services. The details will be put on the screen. You will never regret how God will be touching us in this coming season and how the spirit of the living God will be moving. May God bless you. May God be with you. You want to give, I believe details are being put on, on the screen. You want to give your offering. It might be your seat, it might be your tithe. Details are being put on the screen right now. Details are being put on the screen, and as you are giving, I pray that may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, and may the Lord show himself to be faithful over your life and destiny. I pray, may you not run dry. I pray, may the Lord expand your pantries and fill them. I pray, you will not be a person who will become a beggar, because the Lord is your provider. Apostle Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs according to my riches in the heavenly glory. Everything can be closed, but I pray that may God supply your needs. God bless you. God be with you. Let's meet.
uh, on our next session uh, as we will be online. God bless you.